and the ministers promise to follow up these matters. But uh, Thank you very much, Right Honourable Speaker. Uh, thank you. Uh, many issues using that, uh, that angle. But also, we have, of course, some of the people uh, who have not, some of the ministers who have not been able to address some of these matters. Especially, I usually guide, when you present a matter, I know a matter which requires a minister to come back and report on the floor, and a matter where a minister can go and sort it out questions. If you look at uh, rules from 41 to rule uh, which is provided for under rule 43 we, we have uh, we have questions to ministers which is provided for under rule 42 we have questions for oral answer under Rule 45. But rarely we have questions to the Prime Minister under Rule 41. But apart from the Prime Minister, rarely do I get questions being asked under these other rules. So I would implore you, where you feel a minister might not give you a clear answer uh, under matters of national importance. Here he is mandated to come, back, to come here on the floor and answer you. But also I want to instruct the clerk to comb through the answer if we have any pending issues which ministers were supposed to report on to ensure that they are picked and uh, reported on quickly. So on a... Uh, uh, Proceed on the same matter. I am here right now. Uh, yes, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you've spoken about clogging our order paper, but sometimes the, there are answers that we don't get when we should get them. The Minister of State for Defence, the Junior Minister has said that committee on drone was set up by CDF. The CDF is a member of this parliament. In his absence, his deputy is there, Siren. Why does he have to go back and then return to parliament when the responsible people are here? Do they just come to look at us and go away? Can't they provide these answers such that this matter doesn't clog the order paper? Thanks. He's not, uh, he's not, in the, he's not assigned any policy related matter on this floor of parliament. Now, but I, he's here as you. As a member of parliament, he can and come debate on anything Okay, uh, so deliver on the answer here. We can't reprimand him. You know, but a minister, we can. And the lead of government business can come up and say, no, honorable minister, please go. But the leader of government business cannot see a substantive. There is an increment in uh, crimes, right on both speaker and animal theft. So through my prayer, right on both speaker, I'm appealing to government such that those small posts which used to serve people in the villages should be restored such that we can reduce the rampant theft of animals and Security. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Uh, colleagues, we handled this matter. Okay? No, no. You see, it was from the committee. Okay? Now, the, an issue might have not been concluded to your satisfaction, but it was concluded because the moment a report comes from a committee, we debate and we adopt it. 
Yeah? Then we've concluded on it. It's a report of the House. So I wouldn't want us to again give different discussions. I would want the minister to take note of the insecurity concerns. They assess whether this is the cause of insecurity. Now, Honorable Tamaguzi, please, please. Honorable Tamaguzi, you are not a security expert to say the increase in crime is caused by that. I hope the minister takes note of that. Uh, and, uh, and right, Honorable Speaker. My matter is actually related to what my fellow ex-seminarian, Honorable Nuagaba, talked about. <laughs> but in my docket, as the Shadow Minister for East African Affairs, as Ugandans, we are normally very peaceful, uh, peaceful people, and we welcome so many people. Oh, Honorable yes. Macho. On the Macho. seventh. County Richiga district was shot dead by the army of the Randiz government. We always welcome them peacefully. Many of them enjoy uh, peace here in Uganda. Uh, this is against the objectives of the East African uh, Treaty. To the Minister of East African Affairs, Community Affairs, to come and issue a statement on how make this, uh, the, the integration more powerful as uh, East African countries to allow inform you that uh, it's being handled at a bilateral level. It's an issue, I would say, building uh, on the relationship that we've of recent managed to repair, it serves no good purpose. Uh, uh, it serves no good purpose. Once we are not satisfied, then we can escalate it to a debate here. But for now, we are safer handling that matter at that strategic level uh, of government to government. And I know it's being handled. Yes, Karangara? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I thank you for this opportunity. I rise on a matter of national importance concerning the illegal detention and killing of our people in Karangala, in different lands. illegally detained and killed by the UPDF soldiers on the lake. Um, Mr. Speaker, not only him, quite a number of people have, been, have lost their lives thanks to, the, um, thanks to the UPDF who are on the lake. And also, they are saying they find them with, and two, government should compensate Masaba Stephen and his family, sorry, government <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Kalangala issues are very No honor Ivan Then I beg to submit. Honor uh, Megade, was it the same issue which had brought To my office, not today. I was not picking issues of uh, national importance. Uh, thank you very much, Right uh, Honorable. Speaker, Right Honorable Speaker, this vice, uh, this has become a vice because it has come here a number of times. But right honorable speaker, what pains us is that the reason why these people actually
very short and at times killed because they engage does URA taxes this same uh, illegal gear then we wait to hunt the people to hunt for the people yet we can actually control this at the border points so we uh, before before you come lop lop wanted to say something a little about Right on the speaker, thank you. I I don't want to there was a way known in which the fishermen would solve problems of uh, illegal fishing. Either by way of an inquest, because information is available that some of the UPDF officers allegedly tracking illegal fishermen are actually aiding illegal fishing that actually some of these officers actually are also involved in illegal fishing that in fact when they confiscate this fish they are so eager to take it and partake of the yeah right on speaker information right on speaker Right on speaker, this house owes it to the people of Uganda. We have conversed over this matter with my team in my cabinet, and we shall soon move a motion for a house inquest into the torture, the violation of rights of citizens on landing sites. I want to put the house on notice over this motion. We cannot simply leave it. The UPDF and its officers are not an outlaw outfit. The Fishing Act does not turn them into a court. Honorable colleague, don't access a microphone without my permission. Please. So that whoever comes to speak, either in support or in denial, is on a notice that we are going to investigate this matter, including any lie. Chair, Committee on Defense, what did you want to update the House about? Uh, thank you so much, Right Honorable Speaker. Right Honorable speaker the information I wanted to give to colleagues we are handling this specific issue and the issue your matter here right honorable speaker the matter is taking turns the honorable MP for Karangara raised an issue that this gear that is used go through our borders is cleared. Right Honorable Speaker and colleagues, we know that the Ministry of Agriculture is responsible for regulating importation of GIA and there is an external trade act order that the Ministry of uh, Trade uses to license those who import GIA. How come then that you have illegal GIA being used yet all these fishing nets are licensed and are cleared or even know how my mind runs. <laughs> he has preempted what I would say because he knows thank Honorable Katesh for saying we should go deeper into inquiring into the causes. I have been with the Minister of State for Fisheries we are in very, very much available, and uh, I also would like to know the date when St Stephen Masaba was, was killed. 29th can be of this year. And uh, what I'm trying to say is that it some of these specific issues, but because the committee handles work behind the cameras we shall still be there and if it is in the opinion of this house that we update the committee 
we meet the committee over on procedure matter that we may need your guidance as a ministry we are willing we don't condone the the excesses by the UPDF or some of them or the officers UPDF has stood out as a patriotic nationalistic army that is selfless they with the duty to defend this country and protect Ugandans and their properties. But uh, the issue of fishing, you will guide me. Whether we go yes. ahead and meet with the chairperson and the committee, or we come with a statement on this particular matter. No, Honorable, um, the committee seems to have moved a little bit. They have already done some work. It's not good to stop them in their ranks. So continue and submit a statement to the committee. But that's on general and long term. Uh, what we need and all that, kind of incorporate, uh, have a short statement on that issue so that we handle it within that one. Next item. Item three. Motion for adoption of the report of the Budget Committee on the Budget Performance for the Financial Year 2021-2022. Committee Chair. Pro Procedure matter. Honorable Enos, as the Chair comes. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I'm, stand I'm uh, raising on uh, Rule 114 which clearly states that uh, ministers should be in attendance of our sittings, and if they can't, their statements should be available. When you look at the front bench, it's as good as empty. Uh, yes, sorry, okay, I apologize. Oh, but it's not full enough. Yet on the order paper, honorable, right honorable speaker, we have very critical matters relating to the strategy, budget strategies for these ministries and agencies. The, the most, most of the ministers are not here. I don't know whether we are going to proceed right to debate the performance of the budget, uh, debate the, the budget framework paper. Where the ministers for finance here? No, that doesn't mean ministers shouldn't be here. Because only where you're taking me, it becomes so tricky on our side. We have a statute. <laughs> so, on a chair budget. <laughs> right, honorable speaker and honorable members, I beg to submit a report on the budget committee. I beg to lay. The minutes of the committee speaker, when we had joined parliament last week, I presented the report on the national budget framework paper, but in that report there was a component. Thank you, Rajon. I have been laboring to access the budget performance. Uh, I can't access it uh, by E or if it's here, we need to be advised that we can follow properly what the chairman. of having the document uploaded, but we are facing a system with our service provider. 
of the ICT services. I'm um, told it's on and off. Um, ICT ensure you display it on screens. The major highlights of it. As who wanted to print, I said it's printable. You can print it out and you do your research and we come with the information that the committee required to process this report. And even this afternoon, Mr. Speaker, you seek your ruling on that matter. That in the face of a very defiant Ministry of Finance and a ministry that implements a budget separate from what this parliament usually passes, and I have evidence, I'm going to comment on it. Why should we now allow, I'll take information from you. Thank you, uh, my colleague, for giving me. Thank you, Retro Speaker. Uh, Retro Speaker and members, you may want to know that while even up to yesterday, when finance appeared before budget committee, no minister appeared. It was only PSST that appeared. Speaker, at this stage, I think that this parliament must be heard and loudly as such. These ministers, most of them are actually members of parliament, and they owe us a duty. They Who told me that uh, he is out of station, but Honorable Amosir Gorobi has been appointed as acting minister. Now, the moment you have acting minister, you have a minister. Okay? <laughs> That's number one. My friend, may we get this right from the onset, right on the speaker, and with your kind indulgence and guidance, that actually the ministry denied the committee information? Did I hear that earlier here? May we first clarify that right on the speaker before anything else? We can thank tolerate you. the, the minist deputy uh, minist uh, ministers. Uh, th thank you. Because you see, why the issue of the committee is very important. The same. Ministers, ministers complained uh, and uh, before Honor Omsasis can come to answer that, I need to get confirmation from a chair of the Committee on Budget in regard to being denied information. Right Honourable Speaker and Honourable Members, the information which uh, the committee wanted early on was on a half year budget performance. But uh, yesterday when we were looking through the issues, the team which came from Minister of Finance headed by PSST informed us that uh, they are to follow the law. So they quoted section 18 of PFMA and regulation 36, which requires the minister to submit the annual uh, half-year budget performance by end of February. So for them, they say they are still in time. So that's the information they give. And the uh, right honorable speaker and members, when we check the law, we are we concurred with their submission. Thank you. Thank you. Because uh, I followed up
in the row. So what they gave were really was uh, that was a technical issue uh, around that. So and but we have agreed with the chair uh, to ensure that we get this information, which will show us how far we've gone with the budget. So, Honorable Committee, yesterday, but something personal happened. When I talked to the chairman of the budget committee, he accepted my apology and admitted the technical team to provide information to the committee. Right, uh, Honorable Speaker, on on uh, half year performance. I want to thank you for having agreed with us. A matter was raised last week and we had to we were moving and comes we consolidate it and present it to Parliament. I want to commit that before the, the policy statements uh, come in, we shall have brought this report and the parliament will be in position. I, would have, I was expecting, Mr. Speaker, the minister. To acknowledge the lacuna in the law and the rules, Rule 145.3, as against Section 18.1 of the PFMA. Because if we continue with it laxed, it means we shall be back on this same issue because the rules are very clear. I'm very sure the committee was pursuing the rules and the minister was pursuing the act. It's that we shall amend, we shall propose to amend the rules to conform to the act. I don't know, speaker. I thought that should really be clarified that we do not really appear as though we are witch hunting the ministers or actually the ministers are above the law. Thank you. Uh, th thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable. Uh, I agree with you, but we have, when we reach on the budget framework paper debate, there are some uh, communications I want to make. And regarding to the challenges which I found in the rules when I was reading as both and where you find a conflict the statute takes precedence on such a matters but it's important for us and finish it All right on our speaker and on our member on 29th September 2022 and the annual macroeconomic and physical performance report for financial 2021-22 on 31st October 2022. The two reports were referred to budget committee. Members, I'm reading uh, the executive summary because the details are below and also in the other component. Economic and physical strategy for financial 2021-2022. Government e economic and physical strategy in the financial 2021-2022 were hinged on policy intervention that would sustain economic recovery from the social economic setback caused by COVID-19 objectives set out in the, the third national development plan. The size economy, the size of Uganda's economy, mainly related to the full reopening of the economy 
in January 2022, following the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown measures. All three sectors of the economy registered growth in financial 2021-22 with a strong recovery in the industry and the service sectors. 1% inflation. Headline inflation remained declined to an average of 3.2% in financial 2021-22 from 3.5%. The merchandise trade deficit widened further during the period under review as the export exports fell faster than imports. Export receipts declined by 27.3%. Percent, followed by a decline in, in May $3,300 million US dollars in financial 2021 and community as Uganda's major trading partner in financial 2020, with a total trade 0.4 million in financial 2021. The European Union, Middle East, and the rest of Africa followed in that order. Limitations from Uganda living abroad total to United States dollars of 1,333 migrant hosting community. International Reserve. At the end of June 2022, the stock of International Reserve stood at U United States dollars, 4,117.2 million US dollars. This was equivalent to 4.5 months of imports of goods and services. This reserve cover was lower than the 4.9 months of import cover recorded at the same time the previous year. Overall physical balance. The overall physical balance in financial 2021-22 was a deficit of Uganda shillings 11,973 billion shillings, representing 7.4%, which is generally non concessional borrowing and culturally to government debt strategy. The cost of doing business due to its effects of crowding out private sector in the credit market and the physical responsibility. In regards to a year on a year comparison, revenue to $63 billion, while tax administration measures amounted to Uganda shillings $1,360.85 billion, which was 0.73% of GDP. Honorable members, Revenue yields remain below its potential uh, with a revenue to GDP ratio of 13.5% in financial 2021 20, 22 is still behind the regional peers. While your estimate from a number of studies may be over op op optimistic, the indicate that Uganda existing tax policy and administration have leakages. Addressing areas of weakness in tax policy might bring some immediate gains. However, increasing tax revenue is not simply 
a case of adding new taxes or increasing tax rates, especially if increases are to be sustainable and fair. We are talking about the uh, you know, members. Think you can read about uh, the domestic revenue mobilization strategy highlights on uh, those two paragraphs. We can move to debt sustainability. The stock of public debt increased from Uganda shillings 19.54 billion United States dollars equivalent to 69,512 billions in 4% over the same period, performing within the threshold of the Charter for Fiscal Responsibility and the Convergence Criteria for East African Community Monetary Union, POTO. The increase in debt over the past few years uh, has resulted into the deterioration of the risk of debt distress from low to moderate. In regards to debt service indicators, liquidity indicator, domestic interest payment to total revenue amounted to 12.7% in financial 2021-22 from 20.1% in the year 2020. 2020 20, 21 against the charter target, charter for fiscal responsibility target of 15.2 percent in financial 2021 20, 22. This development indicates that the target may not be achieved and the ability for government to meet its obligation as and when they fall due is steadily deteriorating. According to the Charter for Physical Responsibility to ensure Uganda's total debt exposure remains sustainable. The nominal publicly guaranteed debt to GDP should be maintained at below 5%. However, the current state of publicly guaranteed debt to GDP has not been provided. Government has projected to remain Government has, projected, government has projected debt to remain sustainable over the medium to long term, underpinned by high revenue has not currently been achieved. In addition, the risk to de debt distress was found to literally to moderate due to risks most mostly attributed to shocks to the country's exports. However, exports declined by 27% in financial 2021-22, 20, 